Hello folks. Today I'm going to show you how to quickly process Jupiter in 30 seconds or less per frame. Now I've already shown you how to actually create a time lapse and some other shortcuts to create the time lapse. And I'll put the, the links to those videos in the description. But I didn't really show you how I actually process Jupiter because I didn't really do it until a few days ago when I wanted to redo the animation. So let's get started. Now I had Auto Stacker already stack the 47 individual video files of Jupiter. And this is Jupiter from one of those videos. This is the stack file. And this is Auto Stacker's attempt at sharpening, which, in fairness, they, they say is not supposed to be used for your final image. It's just a preview to give you an idea of whether that video actually turned out something good or not. But the same time last year, I actually used their sharpen file, mostly because I was lazy and didn't want to go through each of the 47 files myself to try and make Jupiter look better. But now I've, I've got a pretty fast way of doing it. And um, I'm going to show you how to do it in PixInsight. Now, there's other videos on, on YouTube that... Um, Oh, Mike is replying to one of my comments. Hello, Mike. Now, there's other videos on YouTube um, that will show you how to use Registax and the wavelets in Registax. There's even wavelets in Photoshop. So um, I'm, I'm not used to the wavelets. I've tried it before, but I like to learn how to do things in PixInsight and even Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how to do it in PixInsight. And... It, if, if, if you prefer wavelets, sorry, you might want to tune out at this point. Okay, so when I said we can process Jupiter in 30 seconds or less, um, I'm talking about the individual frames, but of course there's going to be some setup before we can get to that point. So let's start working on a single frame and see what it looks like. Now we don't need this image on the right. We're not going to be using Auto Stackers version of the, the sharpened files. And let's create a clone of Jupiter so we can see it side by side as I'm working on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is use Unsharp Mask. Now I've set these parameters here. This is a, a very, very soft touch. And uh, I'm going to click it multiple times and we're going to see Jupiter get sharpened right before our eyes. Let's click on it once. Make sure we're updating the one on the right here. You can really not even see anything happen with the first click. Let's try it two times, three times, four times, five, and we'll go one more. Sometimes you can go, we'll, we'll go six, or you can do five and a half if you want to lower the parameter. But hey, we're going for speed today. So I, I clicked on it six times. So that's the first, and the thing is, however many times you click on it, remember that, because that's what we're going to do for each of the 47 frames. So that part is done. Now I've already got a, the curve set up for a little bit of extra color. So we'll click on that, and you can see I increased the saturation from the middle up to the up to one square. And let's just apply that. Hey, now we've got some color. So with six clicks of unsharp mask and one click of color, look at how, how quickly we've already got something that looks actually, I think, already acceptable for our animation. Now, what I don't like right now is that the moon is not bright enough, so now we're going to work on that next. Okay, before we get to the moon, I, I have actually two other features I, I should mention here. One is HDMI multi-scale transform, and this is also a very soft touch, and this is optional. If you think it helps the planet, uh, you can try it. But if I execute it, let's see what it does. Hmm. What do you think? Let me blow it up. This is 200%, so it's, it'll look more pixelated right now if I blow it up and zoom in like that. Let's go back. Did it help? I think it made it worse this time. Sometimes it's, it does seem to help. Let's try the local histogram and see if that does anything for us. Execute it. Maybe. Those last two are hit or miss. You never know, but I'm not going to use them for this. 
you know, but if you find you can get better results with them, you try it. Okay, now let's let's get back to work on the moon. So if you look at the picture on the left, you can e barely see the moon there, but just by using Unsharp Mask, we, we've already revealed the moon, but uh, we, we can make it a lot brighter. And the first thing we have to do is we're going to create a mask to protect Jupiter. We don't want to make Jupiter brighter, so we're going to protect Jupiter and make the background brighter, which will bring out the moon more. So let's create a click on Range Mask. And let's do a preview. And we'll just keep going all the way to the left. Oh, until it disappears, then go one a little to the right. Right there. Okay. Normally, if you're like working on a nebula, you want to soften the edges, but you don't want to do that with planets. Planets do have a, a start and stop at, along the edge. You don't want soft edges. And uh, so let's just uh, execute that. Okay. Now we've got our range mask. Well, we've got a lot of artifacts here. All we want to do is protect the planet. Um, so let's click on clone stamp. And we'll raise this radius up to 50. And now we're going to click on an area that's white. And hit control. I'm on a PC. I'm going to hit control. And let go of control, or I'm going to let, actually, I'm going to hit control, then I'm going to let click on the mouse button. Now, um, wherever I click, um, it, it's going to turn white. For example, you, watch this. You, you see these areas over here? I'm going to keep the left mouse, the left mouse button clicked, and we're just going to wash away that area. Let's wash away. Oops. So you got to make sure. Let's try it over here. Clean up those edges. Okay, let's try it this way. It takes a bit to get used to. You gotta hit control and then left click to control this clone stamp. It's not exactly intuitive. Let's clean up that. Because we want the whole background to be white. Now let's blow this up. Now I'm gonna make this 20. I'm going to clean up around the planet. And this is, you're only going to have to do this once, not for each frame. Once we have this range mass set, we're going to be able to use it on all 47 frames. So let me finish cleaning this up. And, oh wait, you want to make sure you don't have a, a dot in the middle of Jupiter. That will actually show up when you brighten it. So let's clean that out. So I'll be right back when I'm done with this. Okay, I finished working on the, the mask and when you're done working with clone stamp, hit the check to make the changes final. We'll close that. Now let's drag our mask over to Jupiter. All right. Let's shrink that. Now let's just show Jupiter. <clears throat> we don't need to look at the mask. Let's just show it. And now we're going to pull up curves. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we're going to pull up curves. Let's do a preview. And let's just see what happens now when we raise this up. Oh, wow, I got to go pretty high up to get that moon Jupiter. I mean, to get that, that moon brighter. All right, just like that. Right about there. Let's, let's execute it. Now you can see the moon looks a lot brighter, but... Like what we did to Jupiter, around the edges. Let's go back for a second. You see what I did? I brought out some brightness around the edges. We definitely don't want that. So let's go back and work on our mask a little bit more to fix that. So I'm going to undo this. Okay. Pull up the mask. Pull up clone stamp. And let's magnify our mask a little bit. Now, let's see. We're going to make, oops, maybe this is too much. Let me make this 15. We're going to expand Jupiter a little bit. We're going to make the area around Jupiter a little bit more black. That way we're not going to brighten up the edges around it. We're protecting the edges around Jupiter. Oops. A little 
little bit, something like that. Let's see if that was enough. Let's execute it. And it's already applied, I think, but we'll do that anyway. Now, let's see if we can um, make the moon brighter without screwing up Jupiter. Do the preview again. Curves. Execute it. All right, we made the moon brighter, and we didn't screw up Jupiter. Eh, maybe we got a little bit of a, a light blue line there, but you know what? When you're viewing it normally at 100%, you can't even see it. But but if you if if you want, you can keep working on that mass to make expand out that blackness a little farther. But I don't even think I did that with the uh, the one I submitted on Astrobit. I think because nobody's going to see it when you're seeing the Jupiter at normal 100% size like this. So. That's that. And you know what? We want to save this curves transformation because we want to be able to apply the same brightness to all the other 40, 46 frames that we have of Jupiter. So let's, we're going to drag that there. Let's call this planets, moons. That's fine. Just like that. Oops. I can't use a dash. How about an underscore? Okay, so let's close this. Now we've got our, our mask here. We'll put this off to the side. Where are we going to put this? I want to put it where I can easily access it. All right, we'll put it right, we'll put it right there. All right, so now what we're going to do, um, we're going to time how long it actually takes us to update Jupiter. Now we're going to set the timer. This is going to be fun. Okay, so I deleted the image we just worked on. Now we're going to work off of the original, which I, I always keep backups of all my data anyway. So we're going to work on this original. And let's see what time it is right now. All right, let's start at 9.09 exactly. All right, here we go. Unsharp mask. Click on it six times. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Color. Done. Apply the mask. Moons. Done. 24 seconds. Ha! Not bad, huh? And that was it. That's how, and what I would do then is update all 47 exactly the same way. And what I like to do is open up five raw images at a time. I like to work in groups of five. But if I updated one raw image in 24 seconds, you could, you could get through all 47 or how many you have. In my case, 47 in probably 23 minutes or less. So 47 seems like a lot of images to have to update. But if you, if you really time it out, it's not that bad. And you may think, Chuck, this is the most ridiculous, idiotic thing you I've ever seen. Maybe it is, but you know what? I like my animation. This is the way I roll. If you found it useful, that's great. I hope you did. I will see you later.